subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel this iphone right here is an amazing purchase right now this is the iphone 7 plus i'm going to explain to you why shortly in this video i want to mention that first of all to get this phone right now if you find it third party you're going to find it refurbed under like 500 bucks you might even find it use good deals on swappa in the threes maybe the high threes early fours or low fours and uh, that's pretty incredible for everything you're getting now if you do buy it at the apple store themselves it's going to run you 569 to start 669 for the 128 gig so if you're going to apple store i wouldn't get this new because you can just get an 8 plus so that's already 699 you're only like 20 bucks off might as well get the a11 and all that but this one right here find it refurbed find it second hand and you're going to get a heck of a deal for the 7 plus right now okay so let's talk about design now when it comes to design apple has pulled it off again where they brought a phone just a year or two later that looks radically different from the new phone making you feel like your phone looks obsolete However, there are some drawbacks to the iPhone 10 design. It does have a notch, so it's not fully an all screen. So if you don't like that, you can just stay put and wait until they get to an all screen status design. Also, you lose your touch ID, something that you might be very accustomed to from your prior iPhone. In addition to that, you get a weightier feeling phone and a smaller package. Yes, it is very comfortable to use sometimes, but I find that the weight distribution on the iPhone 7 Plus gives you more screen for that weight. Also, that 16 by 9 aspect ratio doesn't come with the compromises of this aspect ratio found on the iPhone 10. So look at the iPhone 7 Plus design as a practical utilitarian piece of gear. It's kind of like the MacBook Pros of 2015 when they had the SD card slots and all that stuff. And then they went to 2016. They didn't really change the design but they did take off some features that's what happened with the 7 plus the 7 plus lost the headphone jack the 7 plus no longer has the clicky home button it has the capacitive button older macbooks had a regular click just like the older iphone so to me this is kind of like the 2016 macbook pro when it comes to a smartphone it doesn't have any radical new differences but it does eliminate some features like the headphone jack overall the design is practical reliable and useful it doesn't have a flashy design that's going to stand out however there's multiple colors that come with this phone including rose gold gold silver matte black jet black as well as product red you have to find that third party and there's plenty of accessories the accessory market is huge for the iphone 7 plus so i think that overall the design while not the flashiest thing on the block anymore can still please many users even though it's 2018 and we're pushing towards an all-screen design this is very utilitarian i want to quickly talk about the weight distribution it's a pretty light phone for its size and i think that makes it pretty amazing big 16 by 9 panel goes in landscape mode and it weighs under 180 grams so this is a pretty light phone for the size, you're going to like the 7 Plus when it comes to its weight. Even I, I think even people who like small phones will be able to manage the weight on this device. It's not that heavy. Touch ID still remains here. This is second gen. Now, mine's going a little bit slow because I have I didn't turn off the unlock part and accessibility, but it's still a very fast way to operate your phone. You don't even have to look. You can pull it out of your pocket. You'll get habitually used to this, and then you won't even be, you know, you'll pull it out and it'll already be unlocked because you'll just hit the Touch ID in your pocket while you're pulling it out of your pants. So this one right here, still very useful and a lot of people won't even leave their old iphones because touch id is gone i mean i think we have to get used to it not being here no more i don't know if we'll ever see it again we'll probably see inside the display touch id but we're not there yet iphone 7 plus also offered water resistance so if you spill any water on here or you get you know stuck in the rain you're not really going to mess the iphone 7 plus up it has ip67 not the deeper ip68 that gives you even more water resistance but it's enough to give you peace of mind next up is the display the display is incredibly sharper than the iphone 10r that's even coming out 1080p 401 pixels per inch and yes while apple does know how to tune calibrate displays you can't get around a pixel per inch being much lower on the 10r versus the 7 plus this is a 401 pixels per inch so it's still pretty high when it comes to that and also they tune this display to be very nice on the eye I just really love the way the iphone 7 plus was tuned the colors are just about perfect when it comes to the calibration and let's be honest the performance on these phones are still fantastic on the iphone 7 plus i mean unless you really want the gesture based os this guy right here touch id might be a little bit slower to come back home but the applications are all very well optimized and I actually have switched between the 7 Plus and the 10s Max multiple times since I bought the 10s Max. I just want to see what it's like to use both. 
and I don't miss a beat when I'm on either phone. I don't really have any issue with performance. Like I can swap between them and never really bugs me that, you know, I go to a seven plus in terms of the actual performance, unless you're doing video editing or really pushing the phones, which I can say 90% of most people are definitely not doing. You're not going to notice really any slowdown when it comes to the seven plus versus even the latest. I mean, Apple's 2018 iPad released with the same processor that's in the seven plus. We're not going to go on too much about the software. It's iOS 12, the refinement version of iOS 11, which had so many problems last year. It brings the new screen time mode. It brings more battery enhancements to help you, you know, track your battery a little bit better. It has Siri shortcuts, which Apple believes is going to be huge for the iPhone. And it just cleans everything up, makes it faster. And just it's an overall really good software for the iPhone 7 Plus. It brought new life to the speed of this phone, bringing it back to its iOS 10 days for me. Landscape orientation on the 7 Plus is something you won't get on the 10R or the 10S Max. Battery life is something that I also think makes this an amazing purchase because it's still a really good battery life. If you find one with good battery health, you're going to get through one to 1.5 days. Never had an issue at all with battery life on the 7 Plus. Now, I know some people don't have the same experience with battery life, and they said the 8 Plus got much better, but I found that the 8 Plus and the 7 Plus both easily get through a full day. Now, the 3D Touch here is useful if you do make use of it. It's kind of like the S Pen on the Note series. If you don't use it, you won't care, but it's here, so it's still nice to have. Whether you like it or not, it's still there on the 7 Plus, so you do have an extra premium feature you won't even get on the latest 10R, for example. Cameras are not the best anymore. They're definitely not the best on an iPhone. They don't have the smart HDR, but they still have the critical portrait feature. Now, the depth effect features have gotten much better on the newer iPhones, but they still have all your basic modes. And I can tell you right now, this dual 12 megapixel camera right here will not disappoint on the 7 Plus. Although this camera is not a, you know, beast camera like all the newer smartphones, it can still do mostly what you need it to do and it won't disappoint in daylight, but in low light, it can be a little bit disappointing. So don't expect the best low light here for the 7 Plus, but still anything you take in good lighting, you will be happy with this phone. It also shoots 4K video, pretty, pretty good 4K video, mind you, and the audio don't sound bad either. On this device so in conclusion i made this video because i think this is the most amazing iphone purchase right now when it comes to the cheapest biggest most beastly iphone you can get with the latest software that is guaranteed maybe it doesn't have as many multiple zingy colors like the iphone 10r does offer you but it does give you 3d touch which is always a nice feature to have on this device it does give you a 1080p panel it does go in landscape so it still feels like a mini ipad it does definitely has the efficient a10 cpu three gigabytes of ram just like the iphone 10r it has great cameras on the rear it does have a telephoto lens this phone is i think the best value you can get under 500 in iphone land right now that's it for me the iPhone 7 Plus right now is an amazing iPhone purchase if you're looking for a beastly phone on a budget. Speaking of budget, if you're waiting for the iPhone 10R, it's coming to the channel tomorrow. Stay tuned just because you've seen it at other sources. I'm just like you. I buy these phones. We got to wait till launch day. So we will have it here. Subscribe for more. Let me know your thoughts on what you want to see going forward. And if you found this video,